Tonight on To The Point, hundreds of UC workers walking off the job. You see Santa Cruz stood up and is going out on strike. Their frustrations amid campus protests over the war in Gaza. Why this could be far from over. Plus dozens of people displaced after an explosion at an apartment complex. What we're learning about the investigation. Warm and windy to start the week, then tracking cooler weather for the holiday weekend. And later, highlighting the contributions of the first Chinese American teacher in the Stockton Unified School District. Thank you so much for starting your week with us on To The Point. I'm Alex Bell. Hundreds of UC workers walked off the job today. It comes after the United Auto Workers Union that represents some academic workers at UC campuses voted to strike last week in protest of the UC administration's response to the pro-Palestinian encampments on UC campuses. Today's walkout involved academic workers at UC Santa Cruz and ABC 10's Jeannie Nguyen reports this strike might be far from over. UC Santa Cruz stood up and is going out on strike. On Monday, the United Auto Workers Union at UC Santa Cruz became the first to go on strike over how the University of California is handling pro-Palestine encampments on UC campuses. The university was stifling people's ability to their freedom of speech. Um, and then was essentially doing many illegal things in response to that. The large police response to protests on campuses like UCLA has union members at UC Davis concerned a similar response could happen at the encampment at Davis. I think irregardless of who you are as a worker at the university, that's a violation. It comes as a union representing more than 250 police officers within the UC system, including Davis and LA, is maintaining their stance that they've been wronged by the UC administration. The Federated University Police Officers Association, or FUPOA, blames the UC for failing to have a proper safety plan in place. They have called on the Board of Regents to work with campus police to come up with solutions. The union is now getting support from the UAW as well. It sounds in line with the unfair labor practice charges that we've been filing. The university failed to protect workers. It's still having ongoing health and safety violations. It's not doing its job. Last week, the UC filed an unfair labor practice demanding the UAW to stop their strike, saying the strike is illegal. And quote, UAW's decision to strike over non-labor issues violates the no strike clause of their contracts with UC and sets a dangerous and far reaching precedent that social, political and cultural issues, no matter how valid, that are not labor related can support a labor strike. This week, the union says it's all up to the UC to put an end to the strike by allowing union members to continue to express their free speech. ABC 10 has reached out to the UC for a comment Monday and the UC says they stand by what they've said. All right, let's go to Maria and Jeannie, who's been following this. Of course, we have seen images from across the nation of these encampments, of these protests. And I mean, it's become such a big deal that Congress will be talking about this later this week, right? Yes, Alex, the House of Representatives will be holding a hearing Thursday in the Education and Workforce Committee. Now, major colleges, including UCLA, are expected to testify about how they've been handling the encampments on their campuses. The chairwoman of this committee has said that these actions of these colleges, including UCLA, is gravely concerned and is calling this a quote, uh, this hearing a quote, stopping anti-Semitic colleges chaos. Yep, and we know there are a lot of sides to this conversation. So it is something we will continue to follow. And Jeannie, thank you so much. All right, tonight in Rancho Cordova, a woman is recovering after being stabbed this afternoon. The Sacramento County Sheriff's Office says it happened at the Rose Glen Apartments off Matherfield Road. She was taken to the hospital with serious injuries and a person was detained. It's unclear what led up to the stabbing. And tonight, two women are recovering after being shot in Sacramento. It happened around 4.30 Sunday morning near Howe and El Camino Avenues. Both women were hospitalized and investigators are asking anyone with information to call the Sacramento Valley Crime Stoppers. And tonight, more than 30 people are looking for another place to live after an explosion at the Washington Courtyard Apartments in West Sacramento. While the Red Cross is helping some residents find a short-term stay, longer-term housing is needed. ABC 10's Roxanne Elias has more on this story tonight. Huge explosion. At around 10.30 Sunday morning, a loud explosion at the Washington Courtyard Apartments on 7th Street could be felt about a mile away. We were inside the house, with the window open, and the, we heard a loud boom, and the curtain kind of went in a little bit, and it was kind of like a big shot. We didn't know what it was or where it came from. By Monday, the building was boarded up and a fence wrapped around the area. West Sacramento Fire says the explosion displaced 34 residents. 
and injured two people who were not sent to the hospital. Frances Shen, whose son lives in a building on the other side of the complex, says she was surprised to hear the explosion didn't hurt more people. They said from the inside of the complex to the outside of the street, it was just blown out to pieces and everyone could feel it in the complex. So I could imagine if a child was riding by, could have damaged or harmed a child's life. The Latino Information and Resource Center is helping some of the people displaced. And so right now the Red Cross is helping them directly. And so it's providing them with uh, vouchers, housing vouchers, helping them with relocation, hopefully assigning them a caseworker because that's actually the, the next step that uh, takes place. We also reached out to AWI Management Corporation, which is the management company for the apartments. They say the cause of the explosion is still not known. The unit in question was vacant at the time, and they're waiting to hear from the experts, such as the fire department, police, and PG&E. Because it's a subsidized uh, apartment, my understanding is that HUD has a tenant protection program of some type to help these type of tenants and give them either uh, a Section 8 voucher or put them in other Section 8 or other subsidized housing. In West Sacramento, Roxana Elias, ABC 10. Four overdose deaths in just 12 hours. The Stanislaus County District Attorney's Office is raising the alarm after four people died in a suspected fentanyl overdoses in four different areas of Modesto just last week. The DA says that two of the deaths are under investigation and warned that this number of deaths in such a short period of time is not normal. To lose people at that rate means that something um, could be poisoning a supply of drugs where people don't suspect it. That could mean that a shipment of bad drugs like bad pills, bad cocaine could have suddenly entered the drug supply. And officials say it is hard to say if the four deaths are connected. The district attorney's office issued a warning calling on people to not do drugs and, of course, keep Narcan available. Tonight, I own police are warning about warning the public about a roadside scam involving gold. So take a look at this. The department says that last week, two people flagged down a man on Highway 124 and Brickyard Road pretending to have a broken down car. They say two Romanian individuals told the man they lost their wallets and needed gas money. They told them that they would give them a ring or a gold chain in exchange for cash. But police say the gold is fake and it's just all part of their scam. Coming up onto the point, Trump's hush money trial heading into the final stretch as prosecutors rest their case. After a warm start to the work week, things are starting to cool down as we're heading into the holiday weekend. And later, highlighting a pillar in the Stockton community. Meet the district's first Chinese American teacher through her daughter's words. She graduated from high school, 1946. She, a teacher encouraged her that she could be a teacher and she'd be an excellent teacher. She went ahead, went to college, knowing that she may not get a job. All right, here's a heads up. If you travel on Broadway in Sacramento, the city is repaving a large section of the road from 3rd Street to 24th Street. The city says the work will happen at night from 8 p.m. to 6 a.m. until June 3rd. And once the work is finished, Broadway will have one traffic lane in each direction with the center turning lane and also some new bike lanes. What's really interesting about Broadway, a lot of people say, oh, it's downtown Sacramento. Mm -hmm. But because of all the construction on Highway 50, a lot of people yes. are taking Broadway, so it's like, oh, geez, Even more you can't up. win. I know. Well, it's that time of year. A lot of travel as we head into the Memorial Holiday weekend, and it's going to be a cool start for us, actually. Had some windy conditions for today that bumped temperatures up quite a bit from where we were over the weekend, certainly. As far as those peak wind gusts, about 25 to 30 miles per hour. And that got us to highs in the low to mid 80s this afternoon, 72 for San Francisco, near 70 for the foothills and close to 60 up top for this year. Still have those northwest winds as we head into the evening that will keep us with a mild overnight down to about 56 degrees. A bit of a jump start on tomorrow afternoon highs with those northwest winds once again back with us 
for the afternoon. Once we head into the evening, though, for Tuesday, we start to see a bit of a wind shift. That'll be more from the southwest, and that will drive in some of that cooler Pacific air and get us more on a downward turn for temperatures. Have a couple of weather systems passing to the north of us as well. Those are going to bring back a slight chance for some showers and thunderstorms for the Sierra into the holiday weekend. A cool start for the valley with highs only in the 70s on Saturday, and then we warm back into the mid 80s for Memorial Day. Highs for tomorrow in the 60s for the Sierra with 70s and 80s for the foothills. Along the coast, we've got highs staying near 70. We're close to 90 as we start to make our way inland with a pretty mild start to the day considering we'll have those northwest winds with us for the morning hours. Five-day regional forecast gets us the start of that holiday weekend and our 10-day forecast for the Valley shows a pretty mild start to the weekend as well as a beautiful end for the unofficial start of summer. All right, Monica, thank you so much. And next on To The Point, prosecutors rest their case in Trump's hush money trial. What's next in the case? Plus, concerns about our water systems. The new warning from the EPA over cybersecurity threats. Tonight, in the historic criminal hush money trial of former President Donald Trump, the prosecution arresting its case soon after a redirect examination of Trump's former attorney, Michael Cohen. Cohen releasing new details about a 2016 call with Trump. Here's more from what happened in court. The prosecution rests its case in Donald Trump's historic hush money trial. Trump's former attorney, Michael Cohen, their final witness. In a heated exchange, Cohen admitting on the stand that he stole from the Trump organization when he requested a $50,000 reimbursement for IT services. Cohen had actually paid just $20,000 for those services. The former president shaking his head and pursing his lips during this testimony. In their redirect examination, prosecutors trying to bolster Cohen's credibility after after the defense tried to paint him as a liar who's out for revenge. The prosecution taking on what might have been the most effective piece of the cross-examination when defense attorney Todd Blanche said Cohen lied about an October 2016 phone call with Trump to finalize the Stormy Daniels payout. Cohen testifying he indeed spoke to Trump about Daniels on that call. There was a brief argument in court over the two images prosecutors want jurors to see from C-SPAN video on the day Cohen says he spoke to Trump. These are those images showing Trump with his bodyguard. Those images ultimately allowed. <laughs> Meanwhile, outside of court, chaotic moments when the large political entourage with Trump stepped out to speak. I'm Alan Wilson. I'm the attorney general for South Carolina. Protesters clashing, some screaming, trying to drown out Trump's surrogates. Trump has pleaded not guilty to falsifying business records and has denied any sexual encounter with Daniels. They have no case, they have no crime. It's covered in the book as legal expense. I had nothing to do with it. The bookkeeper put it down as a legal expense. Former federal prosecutor Robert Costello is expected to take the stand again tomorrow. And with Memorial Day coming up, the judge says closing arguments will likely begin next Tuesday. Nearly eight weeks after the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapsed in Baltimore, Maryland, the container ship that caused the deadly wreck has finally moved. Crews slowly took the Dolly ship back to the port this morning, and the ship had been stuck at the collapse since it lost power and crashed into one of the bridge's support columns. Six construction workers were on the bridge when it was destroyed, and all of their bodies have been recovered. The bridge is expected to be rebuilt by 2028, and it could cost up to $2 billion. It is still unclear clear who will be footing the bill. Tonight, the Environmental Protection Agency is warning that cyber attacks against water utilities across the country are becoming more frequent and more severe. They issued an alert urging water systems to take immediate actions to protect the nation's drinking water. So they say about 70% of utilities inspected by federal officials over the last year violated standards meant to prevent cyber threats. Possible impacts of cyber attacks include interruptions to water treatment and storage, damage to pumps and valves, and alteration of chemical levels to hazardous amounts. And officials say the attacks are not just by private entities. A deputy administrator for the EPA says that China, Russia, and Iran are actively seeking to disable U.S. critical infrastructure, including water and wastewater. 
farmers are suing California over the state's decision to take over monitoring groundwater use in parts of the San Joaquin Valley. The Kings County Farm Bureau and two landowners filed the lawsuit over a decision by the State Water Resources Control Board to place the Tulare Lake Subbasin on probationary status. And that means state, not local officials, will temporarily watch over and limit how much water could be pumped from the ground. And it is the first time the state has taken control of groundwater monitoring. The lawsuit says that the state is going beyond its authority. And you already know ABC 10 is celebrating Asian American, Native Hawaiian and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. And it's time to recognize the people, history and culture. Tonight, ABC 10's Candace Red shares Esther Fong's story. She is the first Chinese American teacher in the Stockton Unified School District. And then this is her, my mom. Through treasured photos, Les and Leanne Fong remember their mother's love. Growing up, you never appreciate your mom until you get older. Esther Fong was a busy mom of three and a pillar of the community. She was always there for us. Mom interacted with all of us and the community in such a, a positive way. Fong became the first Chinese American teacher in the Stockton Unified School District in 1950. And yeah. she always brags she really Never missed a day of school. Fong taught students for 33 years. What was this? This is at the, um, the ribbon cutting. But the journey to becoming an educator wasn't easy. Our grandfather immigrated from China back in 1905. Mama's first generation born in Stockton. When she started kindergarten, she said she didn't know any English. She graduated from high school. 1946, a teacher encouraged her that she could be a teacher and she'd be an excellent teacher. She went ahead, went to college, knowing that she may not get a job. Chinese people were targets of discrimination. They were prohibited for centuries from becoming U.S. citizens, limiting their access to jobs. But Fong defied the odds. She was really proud of that fact that she was a trail blazer, right? And, and she was recognized for her accomplishments. She taught students at Washington, Madison, and Hoover Elementary Schools in Stockton. She retired in 1983. We're still remembering her and still paying tribute to the strong work that she did. Stockton Unified is providing resources for students and staff to learn about Fong and other figures throughout the month of May. It's really an honor and, and special to be able to recognize her legacy. And so although it was in the 50s that she was actually inspiring children, what we know from just her legacy is that her work continued to inspire people for generations to come. Esther Fong passed away in 2016 at 88 years old. This is in Stockton? This yeah, is in Stockton. Stockton. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For Les and Leanne, their message is... Mom, you did good. I mean, you raised yeah. three great kids. Your grandkids are very successful. Um, and, I mean, they're very fond memories. I know she's listening in and she's shaking her head at, and saying, you know, I just don't want all this fuss. And I would say, enjoy it. <laughs> you did good. You worked hard. And it's okay to let people pat you on the back and say you did good. A beautiful family and even more beautiful legacy. And I do want to mention at one point, Stockton Unified had a magnet program at Hamilton Elementary in honor of Esther Fong. The program gave students an opportunity to develop leadership skills and learn about other cultures and traditions. And coming up tomorrow to the point, we'll bring you the story behind the Sacramento Mandarin's Drum and Bugle Corps, which was founded in 1963 as a safe space for children of Chinese descent. The organization provided a space for young Chinese Americans Americans to be part of the community through music and cultural events. Now, over 60 years later, the Mandarins are still going strong and teaching over 1,300 students in 45 Elk Grove elementary schools on how to make music. The whole idea was if we have a, a good organization that's well respected, but it's only providing for 100 kids, why not? try to reach out to more and more kids throughout the community and impact their lives. We provide everything for the kids. And we provide the music director, t-shirts like this. We provide the instrument, um, the book, all of the accessories. We'll have more about the Corps' legacy and groundbreaking music program tomorrow at 6.30, right here on To The Point. 
And next on to the point, an update on a homeless encampment in Sacramento, where it stands after a business owner reached out to us with his concerns. All right, before we go tonight, we have an update on a story that we brought you earlier about a Sacramento business owner fed up with a nearby homeless encampment. Mike Saka owns the Golden Corral restaurant near 99 in Consumnes River Boulevard. He reached out to ABC 10 this spring after he said years of calls to the city and county, including 311, did not clear the encampment. He said people from the encampment vandalized his property, harassed customers, and hurt his business. But on Friday, he told ABC 10 the encampment is gone and he thanked us for lighting the fire. Advocates for people experiencing homelessness say until local and state leaders create more housing, encampments will continue to exist even if they move from place to place. So if you have something you think we should be looking into, make sure to reach out to me and the team. You can always text or email us. Remember, strangers are people we just haven't gotten the chance to meet yet. Take the time to get to know someone. Hey, it's Alex. I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching. The To The Point team and I love hearing from you, and I hope that you'll stay in touch. And don't forget, you can always email me and the team at tothepoint at abc10.com, or you can even send us a text message at 916-321-3310.